S&P 500 holds a critical level. NASDAQ holds major support ahead of a major earnings announcement. Percentage of stocks in the S&P above their 200-day moving average hovers around 50. We'll explain why this is pertinent. The dollar drops. The VIX retraces. Semiconductors try to hold support while energy names try to break out. Why the moves in Palo Alto Networks and AMAT are significant. NVIDIA pennies away from closing at an all-time high. We'll explain why. Why lows and dicks need to be on your radar for tomorrow morning. Should we worry that bond volatility is starting to pick up? We have a ton to go over. Let's get to it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. S&P held that 4370 level. You can see that right here. We see that higher high and how we did that. I think that's pretty important. You were able to hold right in here, right across this level. That's something that we've really been trying to work on. We've been trying to find some kind of bottom. Now, whether or not this little area is the bottom, but we talked about on Saturday, and as everybody knows, these videos are all connected from Saturday throughout the week for those that are new, welcome. So you can see the doji right here and how you're holding into the doji. And we talked about this on Saturday and that we could possibly flip. And we're going to get into why we thought that in a moment here. But it's important to understand that that doji and overlay your moving averages right here. And you can see that you still have a ton of work to do. You have a ton of work to do in here. Now you did do a couple of things that you wanted to do. You started to bounce off that 30 RSI that oversold. So you got underneath of it. And then all of a sudden you were able to pull back. What's good about that is candidly, if you look at where that was last time, September, October was where we were when this happened before and we were at that level. You can see that we had some of that movement going into the last Jackson Hole, but we were down pretty substantially from there as well. And we were had more inflationary problems than we have right now. I mean, that's a fact. We at least know that we're on the tail end. It's just a question of how far on the tail end we are right now. And there's some comments on that that we'll get into in regards to the bond volatility. But most important, if we look at this, maybe we found the bottom and maybe we found the spot to hold. As we talked about on Saturday, we talked about how far down we were. This was a level that we haven't really seen for some time in regards to the RSI. I like RSI a lot, especially when it's a lagging and leading indicator at the same time. I like the divergences the most, but you don't always get them. So you still have to look at where you are and, and just kind of figure out if you have that potential to kind of roll back down. And in this case, we obviously still have that potential to roll back down, but we knew we were due for some kind of bounce. And you lift this all the way up and you go back, it becomes very, very clear. We just drop a pin right here and just see how many times you've been down here in April and March. It's very rare to be in this level and then for us not to bounce some way. And that's exactly what we talked about on Saturday. And that played out very well. It doesn't always mean you're going to pick a bottom and you're automatically going to go back up. But at a minimum, what it usually means is there's some kind of rally. And then from there, maybe you break, maybe you don't. But in this case, you can see that at least you're bouncing and maybe you get back up, maybe you don't. But at least it's telling you that the selling pressure is going to let up. And then we drilled into this and I just want to follow up on this because this is what we like to do so that we can see if what we think is going to happen or what we analyzed is actually happening, right? It's silly to go through all that work we went on Saturday and then not to look at it again and say, okay, well, we had a thesis. How's our thesis doing? So if we take a look at this, drill into it, and we talked about how this four hour RSI was at such a level that we've only seen it once in March. And then we had to go back to October or September and October was the low. This little move right here was the highest CPI when CPI peaked and that was the low of the market. Even if we took out another low, that was the low of the market, period. And then of course you get into this drop and we should all know what this drop is. That is Jackson Hole, what we're going into on Friday. And this, of course, was just a bunch of, you know, inflation is going to be around forever. Woe is me. But the peak is there. And then what happens from that peak? You rally. So if you looked at this and we marked this off on Saturday, but let's just follow up and just realize that one, two, three, four times you've been here. Every single time that you've been here, this has been a spot for what? For a possible stop of the bleeding. That's all it is. It's not telling you you're going higher. It's just basically saying, hey, we're probably not going to drop as fast. That's how we use it. So now the question is, what should we focus on? So the pre-market live video, one of the things we went over today was we need to get above 44.10. Did we get above 44.10? No, we did not get above 44.10. You I mean, you almost, almost have to laugh. Now, this is somewhat troubling. I'm looking at a four hour chart. We'll drill into an hour late. I worked off that complete oversold position. I'm almost back to flat and I still can't get over 4410. 
you have a heavy market, guys. You have a heavy market. Now, this is from somebody that is, was long a bunch of tech and is carrying a bunch of tech overnight that, that we're up in. And, and I'll go through a couple of those trades so that you can do it for yourself. But when you look at this and you see this, you worked off that whole over, oversold condition and you still can't get over that. Now, do it on an hourly. All right, just so we're clear. Grossly oversold. We talked about this positive divergence that was here. We talked about this on Saturday and you can see it right here. You can see it played out perfectly. How high did we get? 44.10. We're almost overbought. I'm trying not to laugh. I guess it's kind of like a, a nerd that doesn't want to laugh at like the calculus joke, but we're at one and a half percent and we almost went from oversold to overbought on that move. That's crazy. That tells you you have a heavy market. That's what it's telling you. And I think that you can see that except for very select stocks that quite frankly, people are out of position on. And I think they're the, I think they're the names that move today, but we're going to get into that in a moment because we saw a lot of really great action. Let's just take a look at the, at the NASDAQ. But before we do that, I do want to overlay this because we do this in the pre-market live. I show this private cloud that I created that I use to kind of take a look at the market. The only thing that I would say about this that I want people to understand is, you know, if you look at this green, when it turns purple, that's usually a short term indicator. Really what I want to see here, and I'm showing this for a reason because we went over it this morning publicly. So I just want you guys to understand it. So this is a really critical level for me. I need to make sure that we stay above this one cloud. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. This already with the doji over my 4410 area i already come into that area and now i've already hit a lower low i'm not holding my breath and then the fact that i have a high here i have a higher high here and then i have a lower high here we already know that we have a negative urgence and we're not over that we've worked off the oversold and we bounced one and a half percent it's kind of crazy that's all we could get now they could say it's extremely light volume what bothered me was the move in move and we're going to get into that but we have a bunch more to get into before we get that far and i like to try to keep these shorter on the weekdays because uh, people have a lot going on and i want to make it more actionable and just follow up on some things that we did so you can comment on that and on the format but people seem to like the saturday format and following through a lot of really good comments there's a ton of stuff in saturday's video i'll link it at the end if you haven't seen it you, you want to watch it so if you those that watched it i already got emails from them buying the video so you're welcome thank you for the emails it means it means a lot actually guys when you guys share this and the comments it lets me know that this isn't really for naught uh, and it lets me know that i'm getting through that some of the stuff people are actually learning. So say you're oversold right here, I get it. We could always get more oversold, that's great, but you bounced. So we have to take that into account. Now, does that mean that you have to go crazy and buy stocks? No, no, if you didn't buy today, you're pretty much done, right? I mean, you can go into tomorrow, but what are you gonna do? You're going to buy into this, you're gonna buy in the 4460, and then what happens? Then you do something like this and all your hopes and dreams are smashed. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to bide your time. Now, we did a bunch of trades today in NVIDIA, long options, stock, and Tesla as well, PANW. I'm going to show some of it. But I think the important thing is you're in a trader's market again. You're below the 55. You don't have institutional sponsorship. A lot of questions why I use the 55. I'm going to show you today why I use the 55. One of the reasons why I use the 55. Lots of questions and comments about that. I do read all the comments. I do respond. It just takes me time because it's a one-man show. Before we get into the sectors, the one thing that we must watch, we have to watch this level very carefully and make sure that stocks above the 200 day moving average, the percentages stay above 50, right? That's really important. They have to, we need that, okay? Anything below 50, you can go look at the S&P yourself. Anytime we get below 50, anytime we underperform, right? We underperform. Now, more importantly, what happened to the dollar? Because everybody was giddy with the dollar and today was the day the dollar was gonna break out. If you watch Saturday's video, we were pretty clear that it was not that obvious that that's what was going to happen. And we walked through that. Now, what we'll do here is let's go to this chart because it's even clearer to just do it this way and then just drop down the 200 ourselves. So we talked about this. We said that you still have a declining 200 day moving average. And then we talked about the death cross. Now I have to set the death cross up here because that's a 90 that I use for something else. But let's just drop this here, make that a 55. and. I should make that open a little close too, so it's even cleaner. All right, so what you're gonna see is what's in charge when you have a death cross, which is what a 50 crossing a 200 is right here. When you have a death cross, the 200 becomes resistance. Well, it's not that simple, people will say. I'll show you in a second. So 
It is that simple. This becomes resistance. The 200 days resistance, period. It's irrefutable. It just, it's just the way it is. And it might work because people think it works. I don't really care one way or another. It works. So it is a great guide. When does this negate? When I get a golden cross. Until I don't get a golden cross, you have a death cross. And it needs to be respected. And it's really that simple. The 55 is not support or resistance when you have a death cross. It is the 200, right? And this is glaring. I'll give you a great example of it. Here's the spy. And let's clean all this off. Here's the spy. Here's your death cross right here. Now, the day of that death cross on the spy is right here. After that, hits the 200, rejects. Hits the 200, rejects. 200, rejects. 200, rejects. When does it no longer reject the 200? Right after you have a golden cross. Okay. Until this has some kind of golden cross and people can say anything they want, I don't care. I, I do what works for me. You have to do what works for you. If you listen to everybody, you're going to have a really tough time as a trader. So if you look at this area, you have to find out what works for you guys. I, I can't make it any clearer. So if you look at this and you just follow it, I, I don't really care that we hit here. The other thing that we worked through and I think that we were pretty much dead on was that trend line. And I don't think that people were eerily picking this up and looking at this the right way. And we had talked about this, that you always try to want to clone these and see where they fit because you want the same trajectory. Well, you kind of fit right in there perfectly. And then if you want to play devil's advocate, you can kind of say, well, this is your flagpole. This is your flag. And I kind of have a bare pendant and I'm at the top end of the range. So I'm at the top end of the range. I have the 200 right here, but you're going to tell me that the dollar is going to break out. Okay. So what didn't happen today? The dollar did not break out. It dropped. I don't know if it's going to drop tomorrow or not, but we know exactly the area that we have to watch. Remember what we went over on Saturday that we have to pay attention to. If the dollar rises, then bond yields will rise and the equity markets will fall. If the dollar rises, bond yields will rise, equity markets will fall. All right. VIX is dropping. That's a nice move ahead of what we have going on this week. It's kind of somewhat surprising, quite frankly. And I'll take it because it helps with option pricing. So we did drop. We only dropped 1%. I'm not going to knock it. I'll, I'm gladly take what we got today with the VIX and the drop. We are now monitoring the VIX again. Why? This time Jackson Holes, we went through, we were up 16%. This time going into Jackson Hole, we are up 30%, two times. Friday is going to be extremely volatile. I have a hard time saying it, not laughing, because it's going to be, it's going to be crazy with the, the positioning of NVIDIA and how people are hedged. You look at the socks, it's not something we're going to get overly excited about in here. And we should tie this right back to the NASDAQ. But it's not something that I'm going to get overly excited about right in here. We held this level. That's great. If we drop this in. Now, I'm looking at shorter time frames. Why? Because we're below the 55. We don't have institutional support. And that's just how I view the world. You should view the world how you view the world. If I don't have institutional support, i.e. The, the indexes are below the 55, I have to start looking on shorter time frames. And what happened? We got right to this level. We bounced right off of it, ripped. That's no, that's no supply. That's people kind of, I need to get in. I need to get in. We've gone from oversold to almost overbought in a day. That's an issue. And I'll show you another issue in regards to uh, NVIDIA in a moment here. But you can see how we're pushing and you can see how this is lifting. Maybe we get to 500, maybe we don't, but we're already getting overbought and it's only been a day. So we can't get too excited about what we're seeing here. It's great to trade. You take what you can get and you move on. But it, this is not something that we need to be you know, rushing into. Take a look at energy. Same exact thing. This is trying to break out, but you're running right into a DTL downward trend line. Okay, here it is on a four hour just so you can see it. Now, this is troubling to me on a four hour and this is why I'm showing it on a four hour and those that are familiar can already see it. Here you are breaking out and you're hitting these higher highs, higher highs all in here. What are you hitting here? Lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. All right, lower highs and lower lows. So you're already telling me that you're probably going to roll here. Why would that happen? The whole market would probably have to come down because energy is the strongest sector out there. So they are seeing the momentum shift in energy. I'm not really crazy about that. It's not really what I want to see. The other thing that I really didn't want to see is what's going on with the move. I do want to just kind of walk through this on a four hour and just say that we are above the 50 and I do want to be above the 50 on a four hour, but we stopped in some areas that I really don't want to stop at. I don't want to really stop in here and take a look at this. So we got above, so we got above one key level, which all right, it's a start, but 
you still didn't break any kind of downtrend. I mean, not one kind of downtrend was broken here yet. I'm not saying you're not going to. I'm saying as of now, you have not. You can't get over 15. You can't get over 15. You haven't yet. If you zoom out on this and you overlay just the, the basic indicators and you look at this, we're riding the 12 the whole way down. The 12 is the DTL. You're about to get a 22.55 cross. That did not change in a day, guys. All we did was just rally and have some fun. I've had a lot of fun trading today, but you have to look at where you are. You're in a trading market on the tech side. You're not in this runaway bull market. Now, NVIDIA can change a lot, and so can the, the arm news by SoftBank today. If IPOs start coming out, that can change the game. But you can see here, you're oversold. So really, what are we doing? We're working off the oversold. Until I'm over this 15.2, this DTL, the 12, you know, it's, it's a game of hot potato. And as the market goes up, I'm going to sell into it. That's the way that I will be trading this. I don't see any reason for, for me to change that. Now, let's talk about move before we get into some ideas. Bond market option volatility estimate. Well, why should you care about this? This is why you should care about it. So this is discretionary positioning has connected with the rates volatility. So institutional money looks at the VIX and will hedge their options based upon that. Discretionary investors look at move. They want to know what the bond market's doing. So this is a chart of what I just showed you on move inverted, and that is the blue line. Discretionary investors positioning for equity. When this gets out of sync in any way, it usually comes back and reverts to a mean. What's happening here is that the move is dropping, meaning the inversion's dropping because the move is going higher. We'll go back to that, which means discretionary is no longer where it once was. Right. In other words, if this drops, if move drops, meaning it goes higher because it's inverted, discretionary drops with it. Why is this important? If you like these, I post these in the uh, free newsletter, that link in the description. So here you have systematic overall discretionary. I just want to point out the discretionary side real quick. This is by Deutsche Bank. See how you're breaking that zero line? So in other words, the discretionary are the people that are selling. The systems are not selling. The overall is not selling. The discretionary are selling. The people that have the discretion to sell are selling almost to the point of one standard deviation. And now they're net. Do you think they're going to sell more or less if move goes higher? Now, why would move go higher? Move would go higher if people are buying insurance on their current bonds. Why would you be buying insurance on your bonds if you think your bonds are going to default? goes back to corporate profits again. So we're going to have to watch this again and we're going to have to watch move. If this continues to go higher, you're going to see more equity selling in the market. Something for you, something new for you to watch now. So a couple names to really go over. I'd like to focus on just what happened with AMAT because it's so substantial. You had really good news and you were rewarded for your good news and now you're following through on that good news and you're going higher. You're coming back over the 50, you're not overbought, and they're respecting the actual news. This is exactly what you want to say. This is actually really good action. Now, is this sustainable? Is it not sustainable? I don't have an answer to that. One of the key things for me was even PANW hitting the 55 and staying above it. That is absolutely huge, and we did do that. Now, could you crack tomorrow? Yes, of course you can, but we didn't today, and that's really important for us to understand and how this is playing out. That's something that... I want people to really get a grasp of uh, raw stores. Same thing. Let's take a look at that. See how you're hanging in there on SMCI. That's great. Maybe you get to 270 and it rolls. You can't go crazy there, but you look at like raw stores and look at how that's acting. And there's a couple of names that we really need to watch, but let's get into uh, NVIDIA. And I think that's really important for a couple of reasons. Number one, SoftBank bringing ARM public is going to change the way that people evaluate NVIDIA. You might actually already start seeing comments first thing tomorrow morning on it. They're going to say, if ARM is worth this, then NVIDIA is worth this. I, I watched this game before. I've watched, I've been doing this over 20 years. I've watched this game play out. I know exactly how this goes. That's exactly what they do to justify raising this target price. The fact that they're doing this before earnings even lets people come out with the possibility of being even more bullish. This is something, if you watch Saturday, we talked about, hey, we've probably bottomed. We talked about this specific pattern right here, this bullish homing pigeon. I actually did a whole video about a year ago on candlestick patterns. Uh, you might want to watch it. This is your reversal bar right here. This was a great trade. So we were long and then we just came in, we were up. I 
it trimmed. And then after trimming, we wound up adding to it a couple times. So I just want to show this so you can see where we're at. This is when I go live in the morning and then one of the guys will type in here so that everyone can see and then they just link so people know. But you can see that off the open, you can look at the timestamps right here. These were the first ads of these names after we already had positions in the video. I'm showing this for a reason because I want to show you what happens next. So then we have a position and we start seeing NVIDIA set up. And so anyone can look for these positions and, and I'm gonna show you something else, but I want you to get this. So I, here's my hourly. I can't, the blue line is what? That is your VWAP. I can't break VWAP. And then what do we do? We form this little bar right here that starts filling the top of that wick. Then we're here and you can see that after it does what I needed to do, that I've added stock and I added the 430s and 450s. And this is what I want you to take away. So the next thing is to watch and just remember this. You want to watch the next resistance point. After you get to the next resistance point, you want to sell into that resistance point. You don't want to wait and see what it does. You start trimming into it because everybody else is waiting to see what it does. I'll show you in a moment. And then we start monitoring it. We start looking for the next target. We see it break out, but what doesn't it do right here? It doesn't test it yet. It tries to break out. Here we are zooming in, taking a look at it, following it up an hour later. We can see the push with no test. And then what do we get? We get the push and then you get the retest. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this and watch this a couple of times. You get over and then they give you the pullback, which stops everybody out right there. And then what do they do? Down one, two, what do you get? Doji, dojis are what? Signs of uncertainty, just like this little nightmare was here. You flip this break out and go. When you break through these, for those people that follow Can Slim or like O'Neill, this is one of his like patented moves. You add more here than you would have the first time because the probability of this going forward after this happens is significantly greater. And obviously that was the case here. And then we're just using our skill set at that time to trim into the next resistance points. Right, we're looking at where the next resistance point is. You can see it's 305. Then you come here, it's 322. Okay, if I broke 465, I was getting out of all of them. And you can see all my levels. And the point of me zooming in was understanding where I am on the hourly. Now, the reason for understanding that is that was before we even had arms. So if we take a look at this right now, we look after hours, let's drop this in on a five minute. And I really want people to get this because it's something that anybody can do. It takes a lot of time to get it but once you get it, you can do it yourself. If I clean all this off, and we already talked about what we were seeing happen out there on Saturday, but if you mark these levels really carefully right here, for example, like 458, and you watch how you act at these levels, and you start to see action at those levels. We were looking for the gap fill, which was like 465 right there. You had a little mark right here underneath, and you could see that little battle right there. All right, so these are all areas of interest, and then what we do, is we're gonna zoom in on them. And then you just keep moving your areas of interest up. And that's all we did. And that's all you had to do today with this name. It was the highest highest volume name. You, you hit new highs like two, 300 times by the end of today, it was crazy. Doing this, anybody can do this when you have these levels marked off. The question is, what do you do now? And this is where it gets kind of tricky. Do you really go out there and buy that? Does that look like something that's going to pull back? No. Does it look like something that you gotta get in right now? If you're gonna be a quick trader, yeah. But you need to know where you are in the food chain. And this is what I mean by that. And this is why this is worth spending the time with this. So in the room, I'll get questions such as, are, can I still get in? And I got that a lot today. No, you missed it. You missed where the edge was. You, there's no edge up here now. Everyone will come in tomorrow. Everybody will look at this. If you had a game plan like we had on set, like if you watch Saturday's video or you had your own game plan on Friday, congratulations. The easy money's made. Tomorrow's money will be hedging ahead of earnings on Wednesday. Now, I'm not saying you can't move up and you should watch some key levels tomorrow. You need to watch and see how you act at this 4080. The arm news and them going with the purpose of me showing you that is I get asked a lot about trades that I do, what they look like and the walk through them in different videos. I don't really have time. Maybe I can clip that out and make it a smaller video, but this at least shows you something that we actually did and that was easy for me to show that with the timestamps. When you see something like this, and here's that setup that we started with right here. Breakout, doji, dojis are what? Signs of uncertainty, closes over the doji. And then there was very little to do for the rest of the day. Very little to do except manage the trade. The question is now, your RSI is over 80. Do you really wanna be buying into that? No, but if you're in it like we are, 
you might come in tomorrow and you might get something like this and then you might want to sell into that and then look and see if you could buy later in the day. That might be something that you want to consider if you're in that. Keep that in mind. Tesla was very similar. We had a very similar setup. We did this one off the open as well. I do want to go through this because you're not as oversold as you just saw on the hourly. So you're going to want to watch this tomorrow. You're nowhere near as oversold. You can see that, right, as you were in NVIDIA. So if we go back and take a look at this on the hourly, looking at this, you can easily bounce up to this level. But before you even get there, before you even think that you can get there, you still got to get through 240. It's actually lower than that. It's like 240. You still have to get to 240. You still have to get through that. But could you bounce? Yeah, this is exactly where you bounced in December and January and you went up into this channel. Well, the top of this channel is hit by this DTL now, which is like 288. Is it possible? Sure, it is possible. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but it is possible. And that's something we have to pay attention to. Now for tomorrow, you're going to want to watch Lowe's and you're going to want to watch their earnings. It's very important to see what the consumer is doing, right? This is tomorrow morning and it's definitely something that you're going to want to watch. More homeowners go to Lowe's than they do to Home Depot. Home Depot is more the contractors. This will tell you how it's going with the consumer. Dick's tomorrow morning. You're going to want to watch this. You're going to want to see what they're saying about the consumer and how strong the consumer is. Macy's, you're going to want to watch this. Same exact thing. You want to hear what they're saying about the future and the consumer. If the consumer gets weaker, that could be an issue for us. That's it. 